very much, Mr. Fraser. Thank you very much for that beautiful rendition. So, morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us on Untangle. Richie, B, have a wonderful day. And, uh, oddly, you have yourself a wonderful day also. Once again, thank you very much for joining us on Untangle. I want to say a very special morning to Team Untangle. So, we want to say a very special morning to those who are watching us and for those who want to watch us you know how you do that right lots of people stopping me and saying to me them want to watch them listen but them want to watch simple www.thebridge99fm.com that's how you watch and you also get a chance to listen so you saw it on the radio so we want to welcome our guest Want to say a very hearty welcome to Sarah Lou Morgan Walker to Untangle on the Bridge 99 FM. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mama Elise. How are you? I am fine. To wait, let me be honest. I am cold. <laughs> I'm cold. Where are you? Where I'm at work, it's the AC is cold. <laughs> oh, the AC is cold. It looks like this is the morning where everybody are ball for cold. Believe yeah. me. And you know, as the people that are firing us at them cold and them wish them the day. I mean, I tell them, say, not that warm here either. So, exactly. yes, be careful of what you pray for. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so, before we talk about your charity, the Angelic Lady Society, let's talk about this passion that you have for guiding the young, especially women like yourself. Where did this passion spring forth from? Uh, well, Mama Elise, it has been. It came forth from just how I have been able to receive that kind of guidance. As a child who is adopted, um, don't know neither mother or father, biological parents, and have don't have much siblings. I don't have any brothers or sisters, so I'm an only child. And I was adopted from very young. Um, a part of my growing up, I, you know, with the whole identity issue, low self-esteem, um, just trying to fit in and belong and feeling as if you were abandoned and you're rejected and just navigating those emotions and feeling as though you don't, you're not worth it. A lot of how I've become, the woman I've become, has been attributed to the persons who were able to pour into my own life. So Sunday school teachers, counselors, high school teachers, sometimes even strangers, maybe it is a co-worker or a close friend. So I've recognized over the my own experience that just having someone to love you, just having someone to pour into your life, offer those words of encouragement, that guidance. Sometimes it is in rebuke, sometimes it is in um, reprimand, but being done in love because they see something in you you're not able to see has helped to change the trajectory of my life and just how I started to believe in my own self. So I believe and have developed that passion to say, if that was able to be done for me, I can do that for somebody else, or I can just rally a number of women or um, people from corporate or overseas or any way to be able to pour into the lives of young adults and teenagers who may have been experienced or still experiencing some of the things I have experienced just growing up. So that's where the passion comes from. Wow, that, that's a lot. And, and, and you know something, can I tell you this? A lot of us just hear about, you know, people who are in state care and we don't really empathize. We don't really think about all the various things that cross your mind because yeah. you, 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 you're not even sure if you have siblings. Well, let me ask you this. While you're in state care, is there any way for those of you in state care to find a way to find out if you can touch base with your parents or is it? Is it you know not encouraged? Okay, so in state care now, um, Miss Rosalind Gage Gray, who is the director of CPC, and her predecessors prior to her would have been starting to change the narrative of child care and the child protection system um, governed by the the government and the government entities. And what they're encouraging is to ensure that 
um, state of state wards remain in contact with their family members. So they are able to receive phone calls to family members during the week or, you know, just general check-in. Family members, parents are encouraged to visit. Well, you know, that's a little uh, restricted now with COVID, but parents are allowed to visit. Um, some of them do get a chance to go and physically go to their homes to visit maybe for a holiday or a week or a weekend but that's dependent on why they were removed yes. from the from the from the facility or their home itself so they are encouraged the, 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 what the governing body has been encouraging is connection remaining in contact and they don't necessarily want to take away the children from the families but based on circumstances that usually is what end up happening that they are they have to be removed to a place of safety but you know counselors and caregivers and just general house managers and the govern the governance CPFSA is trying to ensure that families are trained up, they are encouraged, they are receiving the resources that they need to um to take back their own children into their care. But you know how the system goes, lack of resources, lack of people, just a general lack prolongs the stay of children in state care. I but it you. is encouraged. I hear you. And I'm happy to know that it is encouraged. And we just want to say enough respect to those people who have the heart to, to, yeah. to choose someone and adopt someone who perhaps not related to them in any way. Because it really, you really have to have a big heart to do that. But at the yeah. same time, we still have to remember that as human beings, although we're thankful, we still always want to know from whence we came. And, yes. and, and, you know, no matter how good somebody is to us, and we're hoping adoptive parents understand this and don't feel slighted, but no matter how good you are to someone, they want to know who they resemble. But right. I, I used to have that too when growing up because I don't know any of my parents. When I when I live with my adopted mother, um, I used to question like, do I look like my father, look like my mother? And I'd walk on the road and somebody would probably say, the other would call me a name and I oh turn goodness. on and I'm say, oh my God, you look like so and so he. And I just smile and, you know, and say, no man, not, not, not this person. But then walking away, I'd probably think and say to myself, I wonder if, you know, I'm related or they know me or, you know. And um, somebody was even joking, even among my friends would joke and say, that is the reason why my parents probably, my mother probably marked me in my face. So she can't walk and look and see for okay because I have a big bird mark in really? my face. <laughs> That's funny. And so first we would say, she walk in the, she know why you know her, but she want to know where you is. So, you know, it's always something to kind of think as like, you know, who exactly is your family and if you have siblings or cousins and, you know, just the same way you're offering help and encouragement to other persons, you may want to extend that to your own siblings, but you just don't know them. You know, I tell yeah. you something, you see, this curiosity is so natural, you know, because <laughs> it's it, it just so natural, because here I am yeah. looking at you and I'm thinking to myself, you know, say, Sarah, if you have enough people where me know, <laughs> I wonder if they're related because you have a striking look and that look, yes. you, you know, see it everywhere. So, you know, I am so curious. I can just imagine you. Yes, I am sometimes. <laughs> okay, so so let's get back to state care now. What yeah. is the process of, of government or relevant government agencies when they're discharging people who have come to age from state care? Because that's something um, that always puzzles me. Are you ready to go into the wider society? Um, as, an, as an organization that works with in, um, state care um, wards and just general house managers, I, I really don't want to say certain things on air, but um, they are doing the best that they can. And the government over the last two years have started a program, the transitional care program that prepares them to leave at 18. So they give them um, skills. Um, it will provide them with an opportunity to engage in a, maybe a hard trust NTA course or just on the job training that they can go back outside and be prepared but I am, I am saying to myself that sometimes it is still not enough because though we are trying to get them to be skill-oriented and to be functional and just to be able to provide their own resources that they need, I don't think state care provides enough emotional support to allow them to transition from state care to 
armed society because um, the state care facilities sometimes are lacking in resources when it comes to um, therapy, when it comes to counseling, when it comes to just general um, clinical psychology the tools to help them to navigate because a lot of them the, being in state care in, a, in and of itself is a trauma yes. um, so they go in and it's like trauma is added to trauma and um, because of how limited um, counselors and psychologists and just general therapists are um, across the island you find that 30 girls inside of a home and you only have one resident social worker or one counselor. It's really, un they're unable to provide the one-on-one -on -one that is really needed for somebody to experience healing to be able to fully function in society. So you'll find that some of them will leave state care. They will still have trauma. They will still have traumatic memories. They will still have panic attacks. Some of them are unable to sleep and just generally functioning they, they they struggle not that they can't but there is a struggle and you know so those things i think are things that we could consider from a national level just what exactly we provide when they are about to transition or even before because sometimes state state care start thinking about transition when the child is 17. i believe that when you are preparing them to transition you should start thinking from at least 15 to say you know at least develop that transitional program for three years that allows them to you know be fully prepared or assimilate well into society but yeah. those are some of the challenges that we face both on our organizational level as well nonprofits included as well as a national level I hear you, and I hear you loud and clear, because it is difficult for those who were not in, in, in state care. It's difficult enough for those who were raised yeah. by their parents. So I can just imagine the added difficulty okay. of those who are in state care. You know, you know, one of the reasons why I ask this is because there are predators out there, and mm -hmm. a lot of these predators, I know this for a fact, prey on girls who are in state care. State care. In fact, some I, I know one girl's home where you could just see the big man them buzzing around. Trust me, I've been out. one recent weeks ago. And they were, and then for me, one of the challenges is that a lot of these state care facilities are in very common communities. Yes. And so the, just the general residents of the, the, the area, yep. they, they're just there. They smoke weed, they stand up outside them, drink them, party them, ride them bike. Sometimes it's so appealing that sometimes they even offer the girls things through the fence. So sometimes you would see a girl, I get a little... Well, not that, you know, you see an overlook, but you will hear rumors of girls that get weed from man through the fence, and they use it as a, some form of antidepressant. But I see a lot of these things, and some of them will um, lay away the girls, some of those girls who actually travel to our facility, to regular school. They will wait them, whisper things in them ears, full round, and then by the time you know it, when, the, when a girl transition, some state care, even though the social worker will take her to a particular location as where she will now reside. Weeks later, she returns to the community and living with the man down the road. I see that so, happen all the time. So what you're saying so, is what you're saying is something that I have seen, I have witnessed, right. and I know that a lot of the, the, the people who work with these girls is, is an obstacle that they face morning, is, noon, right. and night. Particularly since a lot of these girls have already been abused. Anyway, right. Let's let's move on. Let's let's talk <laughs> a little bit now about your your angelic lady society. First of all, what a name! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why you named it that? Okay, so um, my middle name is Angelique, but I didn't want to call it anything Angelique. So I thought, you know, angels. And then I didn't want it to be a club. When it, when it just started, we were part of a high uh, extension high school. So I didn't want it to have a club feel. I wanted to offer them something that is more a, a prophetic word as to what I would love them to become. And, you know, and society has a very upscale sound to it. And so... <laughs> 
that was how the name was formed. You know, we wanted the young ladies and the women to, to see themselves as ladies, influential, um, intelligent, brilliant young ladies of society. And so that was the, you know, angelic lady society. That was how the name was. I got created. you. And just talking to you, Sarah, it, it really <laughs> gives us hope because you are just exactly what you described a while ago. Brilliant, pleasant. Thank you so speaking much. Speaking so well, articulate confident and it tells us that and especially the girls it tells girls who are in state care that this can be me too too all right so that's beautiful so you know it's one thing for someone who has never experienced being grown up in state care to go in and talk to the girls but i can just imagine how excited the girls are to know yeah. that you were also in, in, in state care. Tell us about that and what you do and how they respond to you. Um, I remember in the summer, just recently, I went to a facility some um, on the western side. And when I went, they were just there staring at me in their little cliques and, you know, looking at me from head to toe. And they were very skeptic. They weren't very open. They were closed off. Um, and very unapproachable. And but I didn't say anything. I smiled. I introduced myself. I called to them. And this was before the session that I was supposed to speak started. And when I went up in front of them and I shared that I was abandoned, I was left by my parents. I spent a few months, or um, you know, a few months in state care. I suffered from self-esteem. I was suicidal at one point. Um, but this is the end result. I was pleasantly surprised at the response after I shared my story. Everybody wanted to to know me, where I were now, miss which school I used to go, miss all oh, my subject here up, miss you know your parents. So oh yeah did feel so, and it was so it was almost as if they were able to see at the end of the tunnel, what yes. they also could become yes. if they would work hard at it. Absolutely. And, and they were encouraged. And that for me was a very heartfelt moment to kind of recognize that my story was not just to be hidden. And just like, oh, um, Marianne Williams would say that, you know, it is not for us to dim our lights, but for it to be, sh- um, for it to shine so that others may see and so others may see that they also are able to shine their light and, and, and become something great. And so that, that for me is always encouraging to share my story and, and to, and to facilitate as well, because you know it's not just me alone have a story, but to facilitate other persons coming to share their own stories. You know, like I introduced um, resurrected Stacey and Garvey to to the facility, and they were able to hear how she spent ten years in prison and came out, and she's now an author and a minister. And everybody was just looking at how pretty she looked, and they was like, <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Almost as if they could say, no, my life can change too. And so that always for me is the encouragement. It is what fuels us to go into these facilities to bring a word of encouragement and just generally to create a space where they feel seen, yes. loved, and they feel inspired and empowered to become what they didn't thought they could become. So Bless you for that. Yeah. Bless you for that. So, 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 take us through one of your therapy sessions. What does that look like? Okay, so we, not currently, we are the organization is doing a dance movement therapy. That um, not so much in the clinical sense or the 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 the, the clinical sense of the term, but it's we're using dance as a way to. Um, help girls who have been sexually assaulted or abused to engage and embrace and kind of feel their body once more um, and not so much what they have been able to relive as a result of the encounter or the violation, but to become one with a body that they feel as if they have been robbed, that opportunity to to get in touch with and get in tune with and feel and watch mature and grow and, you know, get to love. And we're using dance to do that. And while we're doing that, we've been in 
inviting um, empowerment speakers to come and share with the girls to share their own story of how they've been able to overcome and how they are now operating in a sense of surviving and and thriving and and moving after the goals that they've they've decided to achieve and not be crippled by their encounter and it's just a whole healing process for everyone it hasn't been easy i will tell you that because a lot of times we've seen where girls have experienced traumatic memories some of them are so overwhelmed by the pain and the emotional trauma that after the session they are just completely exhausted or they're tired or they're just unable to speak and some of them are just bent over in tears and so um for me it's i'm really glad to have had the support of a lot of christian women who are willing to come on the ground so pray pray with the girls pray while the session is happening to be able to offer that kind of um spiritual support that aids the healing process so that's what we've been doing over the last four weeks wow. it ends on saturday coming and so it's been it has been great and while i have your platform if you may i'd like to just say thank you to sharika sterling yendi phillips and janella pursuit and nikisha barnes for agreeing to come and speak with the girls the talk sessions have really been the pivotal point of the therapy part you know you yeah. say so many things and i'm so happy that you're bringing out these issues because let me tell you something sarah a lot of people don't realize that even when you're doing something positive with people who have suffered trauma there are so many triggers yeah in spite of the fact that it's creative it's fun there are it's still fun. triggers there triggers. And, and and that's why i, I want to commend you there is something that you said healing is a must i know we have to wind up now but healing yeah. is indeed a must and you said that it has to be intentional, intentional and that is such a key point because it has to be intentional right because that's what be. awareness is all about right and 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 just and just while just to reinforce for even our listeners um locally and and abroad while it while healing is intentional and you are waiting for the person who you desire to experience this form of healing to come to terms with the fact that they want to heal that they want to move on i would encourage us in that moment just to be patient with them just to be able to be there just to be in present with them one of the things i have been encouraging while the session has been happening one of the dance tutors said just allow them let them cry don't hold them just allow them to embrace the emotion but what she taught us in that moment and what we've been doing is you don't have to hug them because sometimes hugging also is is a trigger yes. so um just stand with them just stand in the space let That's them right. be able to sense that you're standing there if you're not hugging them if they're leaning up on something just lean and brace on them so that they can sense that there is a body that standing there in us in a kind of reminder that they're safe that they're protected that they have somebody beside them and they're not alone because a lot of times they go back to the occasion they go back to the space and the place of the encounter while they're experiencing these traumatic memories and so it is it is okay for us to just stand in there and remind them that where they their mind has brought them they are not really there yeah. they are here with you and where they are with you is a safe space I was going to say girl but you passed that stage now <laughs> <laughs> woman you have gone really deep and it is clear that you have done your work you have done your research you're still doing your work and bless you just bless your heart bless your team and continue to make a difference you're amazing thank you so much mama elise you too well i'm happy to you <laughs> <laughs> You're most welcome and we can continue because we have the link our producer has your link and anything yes. else that comes up anything you want we are here. Here. Yes. No, thank you so much for the invite. It has been my pleasure. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day and bless up those girls for me, please. No problem. I will do do enjoy your day and thank you so much to your your team. You're most welcome. Wonderful. Now this is really a, a a success story. It's a human interest story, but wow, you know, there's just so much about greatness and overcoming. So that was Sarah Lou Morgan and what 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 a story. Anyway, we we we're going to take a break now and uh, we we'll come forward with some music. Beautiful. 
want to say morning to all those listening from The Rock here in Jamaica. Blissful blessings to you and the world, Queen Elise. This is Fendi Comfortable listening to The Bridge 99. Hail up the 114 family. Everyone on the bridge. Those on the bridge in Vineyard Town. Bless up all the bridge constructors of this world. May I tell you, you know say, you know say, one of my listeners them said to me, say, Mama, we need to find all the bridge them in Jamaica and talk about them because enough bridge there Jamaica. And him also say, most time moving from parish to parish, there's a bridge that joins each parish. So, if somebody do it before me or so, but... <laughs> Producer said, no, 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 no. So we're going to find those bridges and we're going to bring them on the bridge. And as I said, big up to the constructor them because, because I say, that bridge are off a trunk, you know, because that bridge are no okay bridge. Oh my goodness. <laughs> may I tell you so the engineer then may I tell you. Good afternoon, Queen. Good afternoon, Borigan. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing very well, thanks. Good to hear from you always. Always the same here. Yes. So. What's, yes. What's going on here? Boy, turkey day now, my Hey, <laughs> Turkey day, my friend. <laughs> turkey day, my friend. So how Thanksgiving treating you so far? Well, it's just begun. Um, I woke up feeling good, woke up feeling happy. Um, the weather is pleasant. A lovely day for Thanksgiving. Um, a lot of people will be traveling today, so we give thanks for the good weather that we are experiencing right now. Nice, beautiful. You know, you know it's, it's such a what, you know, I remember you saying that when you finish working, you just go, go home and do family. What a nice vibes, you man. Yes, so man. for those who have family, treasure them. True indeed. Because, True you indeed. know, yeah, man, because there are so many people who don't have family and, 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 and for those who do, just give God thanks. Yes, and, and you know, for many people, Thanksgiving is one of the few chances that people get all year long together with their families and to share, you know, some fabulous food and give thanks for the blessings and to enjoy the pleasures of, you know, each other's company. Absolutely. Yeah. But you realize too, though, I, I don't want to, you know, be a prophetess of doom, but we do realize that for some people, days like this trigger all kind of emotions, you know. Yes. And um, it's not every family that gather together, gather together with good times because there are toxic families out there also absolutely yeah man absolutely. i said that yesterday on 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 our program i was like you know people if you don't have any problems family problems please leave it outside of whoever whoever's homes you're going to today and just let it be about love and be about unity absolutely because you know you have some family you know who come for problem you know <laughs> like it's all peach and roses because you have some families who it better you know even but go if you know say uncle and and when you see you know a lot of preparations have, have gone into today you know so really and truly it wouldn't like for you know family a day that family should be together and you know reminisce and make new memories you know it shouldn't be anything about war and you know things of that nature it no. should just be all about love it really you know? should be yes. and 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 you know we have to remember to you know that you see this time of year and also christmas where there are family gatherings mm -hmm. statistics show you know that there are more incidents of mental breakdowns you know in and around them time you know so let us don't forget that it's not all about oh i love my family and we're one big happy family and the world mm -hmm. is wonderful the world is not wonderful mm -hmm. so there are those who have family that them really dread yeah. going around so but for those who made the journey you know just want to wish them a happy thanksgiving i mean millions of americans are traveling you know, this whole entire week just to be with their loved ones, whether it be by land or air, you know, they're going to get there some way. And a lot of people are still en route, and we hope that they get to their destination safe and sound. And, um, you know, so there'll be a lot of hugs and smiles to go around, along yes. with all the, the good food that is being cooked and all the preparations that were made. And, you know, then there are folks like me, like you said, who are just waiting for the servants. Look here, Borgad, <laughs> if you say food one more time, no. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, me team lift up them hand for that one day. Me say, boy, God, if you talk about the food oh, one man. more time, we're going to know so you're craving. <laughs> Woo, my goodness. Eh? You know it wouldn't show. <laughs> and that, no, you see, and that's why you can't get to it because it's not sure. But trust me, keep talking. You just keep oh, on talking. Man. And we will see what is happening, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Mr. Deban, Mr. Deban talk yes, about food about five times already. 
Eh, yeah, yes, Borga, the food. Yeah, man, we yes, get man. it. Mm -hmm. Good. So you know well, that today is um speaking of food. Today mm. is Eat Jamaica Day. Okay. <laughs> right. So um Eat Jamaica campaign, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries in collaboration with the Jamaica Agricultural Society, focusing attention on the national effort during the month of November, mm -hmm. which has been designated Eat Jamaican Month. And the Eat Jamaica program has been organized to further promote the Grow What We Eat, Eat What We Grow campaign. Mm -hmm. And um, it's in its 18th year. So let us just uh, remember that. And mm -hmm. we actually had an outside broadcast this morning uh, nice. on Richie B's program. And nice. it was Shells out there. Um, we have very nice vibes. I really love the vibes that Shells brought in Richie B's program this morning. Shells in the streets. Yeah, man, in the streets, yeah, Shells. Same one. Okay. So that, that's something great that we can celebrate as a people. True indeed. Um, also, yesterday was Nicky Z's birthday. I just yes. want to say happy birthday to <laughs> Nicky Z. Belated. Yes. You know, but happy birthday going out to Nicky Z. And um, also today with the, with the tradition of Thanksgiving, the Macy's Day Thanksgiving parade has oh returned. Yes. Um, you know, that's something big each and every Thanksgiving. But according to, you know, the, the situation with the COVID-19 last year, there were no spectators. So this year, the spectators return and they're expecting about two million people to be in the city for the parade today. Okay, that's great. You know, I really enjoy Macy's Parade. There are mm -hmm. certain things, you see, let me tell you something, man. There are certain things that just make me happy, you know. And me know so the bona people, they out their bone me, but I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> because, <laughs> because, <laughs> no, because, you see, the Macy's Parade, me just love them, there's something there. Whether me, they're Jamaica, yes, I know. I really do enjoy them kind of things. Nice. So, nice. yeah. Uh, we have an interview coming up shortly, but can I just say something, Beauregard, yes, with sister. respect to the Grammy nominations? Mm -hmm. We had some very interesting conversations, and we've been having some very interesting conversations. And you know what is really something that I have to talk about? You must never assume who people want to win, you know? <laughs> No, right, seriously. Right, right. Seriously. Yeah, I agree. And it just tells us that there are many genres and also many people enjoy them on a different genre. Yes. And there are some people who think it is just okay for them to just talk loosely about who them don't want to win. Wow. And the same person who you don't want to win, what if people want that somebody they feel win? Mm -hmm. So we just have to be tolerant. We mm -hmm. have to be tolerant, Beauregard. I guess that's what I really want to see. And which is why I didn't announce who I um I I'd said I had a favorite in the race, but I have not made any any announcements yet. And that's okay if you have a yes. favorite, because yes. we all have our favorites, mm -hmm. and and that's the whole point. We all yeah. have our favorites, mm -hmm. so it's okay for you to have a favorite. I don't have any particular favorite this year, but but just listening to people talk, it just tells us that we just have to tolerate each other's tastes each other's lifestyles and just be tolerant of each other and the fact that music is a universal language absolutely yes absolutely nice chatting to you so little you more all right? all right all right sister okay fine so that's the global connection with Beauregard want to say a very special good afternoon to the Irie Jam family thank you so very much for listening to us here on the bridge 99 fm I want to say good afternoon to Mikey General. Good afternoon, Mikey. Good, good afternoon, Queen. How are you? I am very well. How are you? Uh, giving thanks, Queen. Giving thanks. Nice. Beautiful. All right. So welcome to Untangle <laughs> on the Bridge 99 FM. Okay. So let, let's talk. Oh, oh, let me sit down. You know why I'm going to sit down? Because Richie mm. B asked me this morning if me ever sit down when me at work. So me start. <laughs> <laughs> so, Richie, see me sit down here? Yeah? So me sit down there, Richie. All right, fine. <laughs> exactly. All right. So I have been uh, a little out of touch for a while. But because we are friends on Facebook, I've been able to see you on social media. Mm -hmm. Quarantine, no movement days, limited gatherings, and all else that comes with COVID has impacted us in different ways. How has it impacted you? 
Well, you know, um, one of the things that affect me with um, the COVID thing is um, the, the, the the no movement days, you know. Um, I'm a, a person who I like to travel. I like to go different, different places. So when I'm restricted, I, I really feel like a coop up, like it's a cage me now, you know. So um, I, I didn't love that. And, and another thing is the gatherings, because, you know, as artists, we like to gather and socialize and thing, and that wasn't happening. So, you know, it kind of affect me in a way in that, you know, I, I, I was disgruntled. We still go to the studio and we still see some artists, but, you know, we look at dance where we can go and see look at people and hear the, the vibes of the people and feel the energy of the people. That wasn't there. So those were the, like, the two main things that really affect me during the, the corona thing, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> you know i i totally understand what what you're talking about and you know one of the things that that became very clear or has become very clear how mm. much we need each other's energy and how much we feed off each other's energy uh, yes. yeah man big time big time big time you know you know, remember you know they say one of the things that um made so many people who passed was that they they weren't seeing their families again you know, grandmothers weren't seeing their grandchildren and all those things. And these things affect them and cause them to, to pass away. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we, we see the importance of um, family energy, of, of connecting to people. It, it, we are social beings. Yes. You know what I mean? We human beings are social beings. We have to gather and things. So anything that um, limit our social um, um, our ability to gather. It, it's going to affect us. Yes, you know? absolutely. You know, even those of us who consider ourselves introverts, mm -hmm. we, we, we may be introverts, but not to that. Why? Because it's, it's, it's a lot when you just, you know, you, you, you're not choosing you know, to be an introvert. You're, you're, it is forced upon you. It's a different level. Yes. Yes, it is. But let me ask you this, though, Mikey, which is something I really need to ask, especially people who are accustomed to the crowd, who feed off the crowd, who the crowd want to see. How have you turned this lemon, so to speak, into lemonade? Well, I've been doing a lot of recording. That is how I turned that lemon into lemonade. Do a lot of recording, a lot of writing of songs and all those things. Those are the things that made me turn this lemon into a lemonade. You know? Um... I'm going to studio with Lucian um, and, you know, we're, we're recording a lot and we're doing dubs too. We do a lot of dubs as well. So, you know, these, these things kind of ease the, 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 the vibes and, you know, make it, make it more livable. Right. I love that. Because that's something else that we have to test to, you know. We have to test. When I say test our faith, I don't mean, boy, that tests our faith. That's not what I mean. I mean, it really tests how strong our faith is. Yes. It does, you know. Um, the thing is, you know, um, I'm sure you heard that a lot of people have mental health issues since this um, thing happening. We predicted you know I mean? it. We predicted it. Yeah, you see it there? Yes. It, 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 and, it, and it's because, as you say, social beings, and, and they're not seeing their friends, their family, and things. It affects us. Absolutely. But um, give thanks that the little times that we get to share with our brothers, our, our family, and our friends, when there's no lockdown, like when there's no curfew, we make the most of that time, when there's no curfew and thing, and, and try to see each other and things. So... It, it make it livable, yeah? Yes. You know, as you talk about mental issues, you, the, the, one of the things that I particularly love about the lockdown, if there is any such thing as loving to be locked down, is, <laughs> is that it gives you a chance to introspect. But that's the very same reason that is causing the mental illness because a lot of people live from outside of themselves. And when they have to go in, hey, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, whoa, you're talking simple empress, but that's a real thing. Some people can't live with themselves. No. And when them sister them have to go live with themselves and it's them alone, then it get it drives them crazy. Absolutely. Do you think roots, Rastafari, conscious reggae singers or players of instruments, do you think you have a responsibility to enhance to encourage listeners' personal awareness? You spoke about mental issues. Do you think you have a responsibility to enhance our personal awareness, nation building? What do you see as your responsibility as a, as a conscious singer? 
Empress, that is one of my responsibilities, to enhance the people's lives, physically, spiritually, and mentally. I believe that we, as like, like Bob Marley music, I, I let us use Bob Marley as, a, as an example. Bob Marley music, even when I was a young youth, look at youth going to school, and I hear Bob Marley music, it did something to me. It brought a fire within me, and, and it encouraged me. So I know the power of music, and I know that music with um, positive words, positive uplifting uh, vibration, it can lift a soul. You know what I mean? And I believe that our work as conscious musicians, following in the, in the vein of the great Bob Marley and Peter Tosh and those great ones, um, is to uplift, educate, and strengthen the people. And that work can never finish in Rastafari, in the music. It can't finish, you know what I mean? No matter what happens, that is always the mission, to uplift, educate, and strengthen. Well said. And you alluded to it in your song, Roots Rocking Reggae. It, I mean, to be honest with you, Mikey, I never know which one to play. Because I love the whole of them. Trust me. No, <laughs> trust me. You know? Yeah, give thanks, Queen. Give thanks. It's yeah, an man. Honor. Yeah, man. It, it, you know, it, it, but you talk about, you know, music like Bob Marley and... And, and looking back on the days when we probably never even know these people or never get so close to these people, you're so right. I, I, I remember as a teenager listening to Bunny Whaler, Blackheart Man. It changed our lives. Yes, it did, it did, you know. And, you know, I, I know the close relationship you had with Peter Tushto and, oh, and, and that, that vibration that you, that you, that's why you have so much fire in you. Because, Absolutely, you're right. Yes. Yeah, that's why you have so much fire in because you associate with people who are living fire. Yes. That man was a living fire. And and he was always standing up for the rights of the people and educating the people and uplifting the people. Absolutely. And that is our mission. Absolutely. I remember as teenagers, we were very fiery. And most of the adults around us would tell us to calm down. But when we were around Peter as teenagers in high school, and he was a big man, Peter Tosh usually said to us, calm down, which part? The only thing we have at the fire, blaze it. Blaze it. Blaze it. Blaze it. <laughs> you, you know, as you speak, many people are of the view. There are many conversations happening all over. And a lot of people are of the view that this genre that we call conscious reggae has been overtaken by those let us call it to be nice in the faster lane all right what yeah. what has your personal experience been as someone who who sings and plays conscious music well i don't think you know um it has overtaken taken us in in, in terms of popularity with some people but there are some places in the world where they don't want to hear those kind of music like especially in europe and in you know in the west side of california and those places where the people are, are more inclined to listen to conscious music so i don't really feel threatened by any form of them kind of music at all and, and i don't disregard the music because i really coming from dancer and i was a dancer artist i used to sing in the early days and when we used to live in England, we used to sing Pierre Pan Dance, I read him a Pierre Dance, I sang music sing. God, me, God, me, come nice up the land. I didn't kind of sing the music sing. You know what I mean? So uh, I, I know wait, 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 what joy it brings, but I also know that in a time like this where things are getting serious, the people need a positive message. Absolutely. So, yeah, and, and that is one of the things that I am. Uh, you know, really glad, I'm really glad for the opportunity you know, I'm glad for Fatis, Fatis Borel, you know. I know he's a great friend of yours as well, Brother Fatis. So, and the work he did with me and in, 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 enable the exterminator crew to go out there. And we've, we've been so many places in the world. Uh, I remember you came on tour with us one time too, I think, uh, and we, we played in some big places. I, but, I remember the glory of the King's tour. Yes, that was um, awesome. It was Washington with Butcher Bantan. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. I remember that show. And um, may I tell you, you know, it's, it's just a joy to know that say uh, that we are doing the work, and people still appreciate it and still love the music. And so I wouldn't say that um, that music has overtaken reggae. To me, reggae is still a dominant force. Uh, in, in reggae, uh, in, in Jamaican music, reggae I, is still the dominant force. 
as we examine the music and as we examine what is happening, you know, over the world and here in Jamaica, we have to be critical. And one of the things that I've noticed is that people, all of us, just want to be happy. And all of us like to be joyful. And it seems to me that those of us who are messengers or conscious people need to remember that you can't just give the people a dose of pure bitters, you know. If you're yeah. feeding the people, you're going to have to feed them with little honey too, don't it? Yes, man, you have to give them little honey, man. You can't make them just feel the pure bitters, man. They're going to refuse it. Exactly. Mm. Uh, are they going to go which part some fast food that sh serve we're not good for them no for and real. nobody not to say you don't eat the meat you don't eat the chicken you know, they won't go with stone food no, exactly food exactly so it, mm. it, 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 it brings very clearly to us very clearly home to us that with all of our messages with all of our consciousness is music and music yeah. is a thing that people use to be happy. Yeah. Music is a thing that elevates people. It, it, you know how many people um, are in a bad mood and then just put on a, a CD or turn on the radio and they hear a song? I'm going to give you an example. Yes. And, and I'm going to use Lucian as an example. Yes. I remember we were touring in America and we did um, an in-store um, record signing. And, you know, a lot of people were there and were signing autographs. But we saw this man and a woman stand up one side and they wait till everybody signed. And when everybody signed and done, the virgin come to Lucian and said, boy, Lucian, I want to thank you. So the man explained, said, him and his wife was going through some trouble. And he pick up him gun and said, him going to kill him wife. And when he might drive, go to him home to go shoot him wife. He turn on the radio and hear Lord give me strength. Oh my God! So the man said, when him hear Lord give me strength, him pull over upon the uh, the soft shoulder, and I listen to the song, and he start cry. Must cry. He start cry and he start cry and him say, he said to him say, the boy, I can't kill my wife and very very and you know him him calm down and he said go back and him talk to him wife and him. You know, whatever problem them didn't have, them work it out. And it was the two of them who come you see that? to the, the thing there. So you see that? it show you the power of music. Yes. You see yes? that? Excellent yes. story. Yes, and I use that as an example because that is what I would love my music to do. Always, anybody who is feeling down, who is feeling upset, just listen to my music or listen to some good positive music change them life, change them attitude. And that was just one song. Yes. You know what I mean? Just to show you how, how powerful the music is. And, you know, that encouraged me. And that, um, that's where I am right now. Beautiful story. And, and as we seal off this interview, may we just encourage those of us who, you know, into the message, in, into the consciousness, that, that joy and happiness is part of consciousness. Of it's course. part of awareness. And we of have course. to include. If we don't include it, we're going to lose people. Of course. Of course, I agree with you 100% Empress. You know, it can't be doom and gloom mm -mm. alone. Mm -mm. No, it has to be joy and happiness too. Yes. Yeah? When you're coming in Rastafari within the chat, you can't expect, say, I just fear fire. militancy and fire you go burn. No, you have to have some good times. So you have to river, go jump up and around, cook food and, exactly. and you know, laugh and run, joke and them things. Yeah, exactly. that, that's part of it. Exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just want to say to you, Mikey General, continue to be authentic. I am on a drive to just bring out those who I consider to be authentic and genuine with the music. Because there's a standard that music has. It doesn't have to be one genre, but there's a standard. Continue to give us 100% genuine music much queen and i will definitely do it um you know the, the um the other day i wrote a song um, um a lyrics of a song and um you said i um you said um you you you, you um oh me, yes yeah. yes yeah the, yeah this quote of flesh i mean makes me prone to sin yes. and you said yeah yeah i like it and i sang it already for fatis but fatis didn't release it and i don't think i think that tape was destroyed so i 
took your advice and I lick over about the song and I lick over so you will soon get it too. Excellent. Because we yeah. in this together. Because, you know, the same fat is usually said to me, say, Mums, me I got arms you up. And that just me. <laughs> That just really means, say, uh, you have to sing the good tune, them. Give it to me, and me feed the people with it. You understand? So Yes, man, we have to, we have to. And, you know, as we say, good people are good people. Fat is leave in devil, no, in devil no mark and, and, and me, personally, because his quality of production and thing and the, the, the type of music where he was encouraging. And even now, I'm in, in so glad that even the youth and him, Jesse Royal, and get a Grammy nomination. Yes. Grammy nomination. Right. And, you know, I, I want to um, put his last little protege. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, you know, um, three of his artists that I know have gotten um, nominations, Luciana, Sizzler, and now Jesse, um, Jesse Royal. Give so thanks. It shows you, it shows you the, 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 um, where he's coming from and the message and the influence he had on the music. Absolutely. Wonderful talking to you, Mikey General. And I am going to listen to the other album, listen to the other CD, and we shall share. Okay, Queen. And thank you very much for this interview. It's an honor. This is the Queen of Jamaican Radio, Elise Kelly. It's such a joy and I feel so good. Uh, Mecha is listening, so I want to tell her, so big up Mecha, I know you're listening. Lord have mercy. <laughs> about, ten, about 10 texts Mecha said already, you know. <laughs> so you have a great afternoon, Mikey, all right? <laughs> yes, man. All okay, right. Queen, thank you very much. Most welcome. Of course, that's Mikey General, and we've been taking tracks from the CD, Hallelujah Song. We have another CD that we're going to be sharing with you, and we're going to continue to promote conscious music and remember put some joy in it all right bless